as the curtains fall on this hellish year that was 2018. We got we got one last thing for you. This is the last chairquisition of the year where we're throwing chairs at Castlevania Lord of Shadow Ultimate Edition. What's chairquisition? Never heard of it? It's where we take a game. We tell you if it works, how it performs, how the graphics are, and how it controls, and we give it a score of one to four chairs on that. And then we talk about how we like the game. If we if we hated it, whatever, and we give it an arbitrary score of one to four chairs. It's so arbitrary. Uh, like I said, we're looking at Castlevania Lords of Shadow. It's from Konami. It's developed by Mercury Stream and Climax Studios. It's on some engine. You can pick <laughs> it up for some price. I didn't fill out this thing because I'm streeting off a piece of paper and yeah and uh no no one sent us some keys uh, ven ven was nice enough to buy it for us so let's get on into it ven castlevania lords of shadow how's it run on Ubuntu? lords of shadow you might want to pick it up it's currently 80 percent off regularly retails for 29.99 wet stinky american cash as you want to put that in your face but over here on 1804 lts running a ryzen 1700 with 16 gigajoules of ram powered by my old crusty decrepit 980 I'm playing it at 1080p. Uh, everything worked out of the box, and I mean everything. I changed resolutions, windowed mode, full screen, throwing it at it. One thing I love about these Proton bits, run and wine, the Vulcan nerve pinch, man. Boom, right to desktop, easy to quit you. Um, Performance-wise, what are we looking at? 1080p, averaging about 120 to 140. That's with everything with YOLO, 100%. Out of curiosity, I decided to crank it up to UHD, 3840 by 2160. It's averaging around 45, not really playable. Graphics being Proton, you might be concerned. Maybe we got some glitches, missing textures. Honestly, I didn't see anything except for one where a light beam wasn't necessarily coming out 100% correct, but I can't ding it because it was like eight hours in i was like ah, i found one thing that was wrong and this is on steam's whitelist so everything's supposed to work and it's a dx9 title so you kind of expect it to be baked controls perfect perfect 100 title uh well perfect title i should say for the areola controller the steam controller since camera movement isn't an issue with this game and uh you know i'm sorry valve no amount of like futzing with the settings on a Steam controller will make it work like an analog stick. So that's always a good thing to have the PS4 or an X-Clone, in my case, controller laying around. However, the lack of camera control is an issue, but not in the way you might think. More on that at 11. Perfect clean bill of health, which I was hoping to be able to say, see, these stupid Proton games are always crashing, but nope, not a problem. Four chairs. Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of like the pro with Valve sort of handling this, um, and especially with this being on the whitelist. Yeah, on Fedora twenty eight sixty four bit, it launches, um, runs uh, at about one hundred and sixty FPS at ten eighty p with the GTX ten eighty Ti and the i seven six seven hundred K. I didn't crank it up to UHD. I probably should have, um, but I'm I'll I, I mean this DirectX nine is more CPU bound under Wine, so I'm not. That Venn's CPU is a little better than mine, so it may not have been as good. Um, graphics, I mean, they're okay. They look like an Xbox 360 game, which is what this was. I just want to say, though, you remember when Castlevania had, like, really good music? Like, I was very unimpressed with the uh, sort of basic Carmina Barana epic orchestral score. And I dug up the uh, Castlevania Rondo of Blood soundtrack, which is completely fucking banging. I highly recommend if you play this game, play it to the Rondo of Blood soundtrack. It's so good. Uh, Control-wise, yeah, everything works. Uh, I was using the uh, DualShock 4, uh, my nice little silver one here. Um, you get Xbox prompts, though, so rip those quick time events. You're gonna, it's going to be a little closer than you anticipated as you're like, shit, which, which, uh, which uh, circle is it? Is it is, which X is it? I don't know anymore. Who knows? Ah! Yeah, um, and yeah camera control we'll talk about that a little bit more in the fun segment but everything works on fedora 28 so i'll give it four chairs striger yeah i have absolutely nothing to complain about on the department of uh, how it runs uh or launches it everything uh works the way you would expect it to and you know it's a pretty old game the, the pc port is from 2013 but it was originally made for the PS3 and uh, Xbox in 2010. So we are dealing with like a, a game that's almost nine years old now. Um, yeah, also wanted to test it on on a SUSE, on OpenSUSE Leap. 
and uh, couldn't get the HDMI app to, to, to work on the on the TV. So uh, both tests were done on Ubuntu uh, 18.10. So uh, one on the Intel plus NVIDIA and the other one on Ryzen and uh, ATI ATI Radeon. Uh, everything ran really smooth. Uh, on the GTX 970, was running the game at uh, 14, uh, 1440. And, you know, I didn't have the frame rate counter on, but everything was really smooth. The game was already programmed to be at 30 FPS on consoles. This is way higher than this. You, it just plays perfectly. So no, nothing to worry about. Uh, yeah, and... Other than that, the the game the game really doesn't sh well. It kind of shows its age, but it has pretty good. And the PC port, like if you're playing with the high resolution, then it looks pretty damn good. Uh, the environments as well are well made. You know, it's got some pretty beautiful like outdoors environments. And you know, in terms of visual richness, I'd put it in between. Uh, Dark Siders and Devil May Cry, so this is pretty good. You know, you got some some games that are pretty bland. Those, this is like quite good already, and this is why it hasn't aged. It has aged pretty good, and uh, also in the the voice de departments, we have like a very strong uh, cast with uh, Robert Carlyle, which is from um, like you've heard from Transporting or uh, The Full Monty. There's a uh, Natasha McAllen, which uh, from the Truman Show, Californication, and the main nature is Sir Patrick Stewart, and he he brings a lot to the game. So that I, I had, that was a great touch. Honestly, that that was that kept me wanting for more and like going for more. The music was okay. There's like this, but it was kind of generic, uh, Lord of the Rings style. So I keep playing through the game and. And expecting to be rewarded with some uh, remastered version of a uh, vampire killer or, or bloody tears because I know they're in there, it's just probably at the end game or something. Yeah, and um, for for the controls, the, the everything is pretty solid. It's a console, it's a console game, so uh, the basic controls of a hack and slash 3D, but uh, it also borrows a lot from the old school Castlevania, so it's not. Uh, not really that uh, 3D exploration game. It's more like a pretty much 2.5D, where you have some liberty of movement, but it's not not really um, an RPG type game. So it's pretty much on rails. Yeah. Uh, still, the, the the combat is enjoyable. Like it's fast paced. Uh, yeah, very good on, on that department. Uh, also, since the it's pretty much on rails. You, you don't get any camera control. And this make, makes it a very good game to play with the Steam controller. So good for that. For, for charge for me. Man. You, that, people, that, 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 that was some War and Peace length stuff. Wow, right? Pedro. You, you challenger appears. Oh, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it's rough. All right. Well, there you go. It runs perfectly fine on Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. So good on you for that. Then did you have fun playing Castlevania? You, you got quite a ways in. Um, man, I'm currently 14 hours into this nonsense, man. I thought because I actually had one day off. And that was going to be awesome. I was, I'm going to finish this. And I'm going to just like, man, I couldn't do it. Uh, the I'm, I'm going to finish because I'm definitely at the point in this particular Lords of the Shadow where I want to see how it ends and I won't be satisfied unless I'm the one who's there. You know, watching a Let's Play wouldn't work. Uh, as Strider pointed out in the incorrect segment, uh, oh, hi, Patrick Stewart. That's the first thing I noticed. And it's like, I, I can deal with this. I can rock with this. And you get a lot of uh, number one making it so. However, uh, kind of rolled in with the thing quick time events can eat, and that would be bags of dicks. The QTEs have QTEs, and that is not an exaggeration in this fucking game. That is a legitimate thing to the point to where you're just fucking laughing at it. You're like, really? Okay. And uh, we brought up camera control. There is no camera control in this. This is uh, directed by a rabid weasel on a meth binge is like an 
angry director in some of the shots where I'm genuinely like, why do you hate the player? Yeah, it's just not there. And one of the things, you know, Strider's like, you shouldn't have camera control in a castle. The first thing they added to the sequel to this game is in camera control. That's the thing. Um, unfortunately, that being there, in, it is definitely on rails, but you can explore a little bit. Their faults, choices, path A, path B, all lead to path C. I didn't explore a lot because if the camera's not fucking with you, like, hey, maybe I'll come over here. You're dead. Mm. Yeah, you're not rewarded for exploration. Uh, lots of titties, berry titties, snake titties, golem titties. Decided lack of penis in this game, but plenty of titties. I like to keep things balanced, but that's not how they roll. Uh, normal difficulty on this. Dark Souls art. I mean, if you try to rage into this, it'll rage right back. Now, I should say Dark Souls 3 hard, since that's the only Dark Souls that I played. And after watching Pedro play Dark Souls 3, um, I'm better than him. And I do want to point out, I do want to point out, the game. Uh, Dark Souls, it's not hard. No, never has been. It's merely a masterful job at exploiting a gamer's lack of impulse control. And if you can control that in this game, you can sit back and play the story and watch the cutscenes. Did I mention there's a lot of cutscenes? Because there's a lot of cutscenes. But 14 hours in, and I'm going to finish it. Solid three for the fun. I'm going to say check it out at 80% off. If I'd paid $29.99, I probably still couldn't argue because there's very few games that I put this much time into. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say this is Dark Souls hard. Dark Souls hard is about the first enemy in the first area botting you because you didn't understand its attack pattern. Um, and Dark, I, I call bullshit on that. Dark, Soul, Dark Souls is plenty hard, especially with the enemy placement and the fact that you have to know your timing very, very well. This is God of War hard. Uh, this, uh, if you've ever played uh, God of War for the PlayStation 2, not the new one that came out. I haven't played that one, so I can't really speak to it. But the first two, God of War 1 and God of War 2, are very, very similar games to this. There are lots of enemies. You combo them. You do some quick time events. And I mean, yeah, the, this game does a very good job of converting Castlevania into God of War. <sighs> All right. So let's get this out of the way. Quick time events. I fucking hate quick time events. Every boss fight is basically a series of them. They break up the gameplay. It's so annoying because the, the worst part is, is that the Castlevania part, like the running around whipping werewolves and converting them to Jesus is the fun part. Um, I just hate quick time events. They're, they're not skill based at all. It's all just timing. And whenever someone's like, Oh, press button X, my brain seizes up. I'm like, shit, what button am I supposed to press? I don't know. I just overthink them too much and it's not conducive for me to have fun. Um, but yeah, uh, the combat in here is actually really good. Uh, though they have, uh, it's fluid. You combo stuff, you air juggle them, you can block, you can parry. Um, there's a little RPG mechanism where you get points for killing enemies and then you can cash them into new combos and new uh, magic powers to like blind people and do extra damage and so on. And uh, when, once you, after you get set through that uh, first golem boss, you get introduced to the uh, the health regen mechanic, which I actually thought is really interesting, where um, you have a bar that periodically fills up, and you can toggle it on, and every time you attack when the bar is full, uh, you heal, and you need to kill other enemies and not get hit and block in order to uh, keep that bar high, or even full in the first place, which I thought was a really cool way to, like, encourage you to not just tank stuff because you can 100 do that you can you can one, run in and just like win fights and you'll have very little health left um but you can but here it's like oh yeah you can if you just play the game the way we want you to you can basically have unlimited health um i spent about 30 minutes trying to remember the name of the fucker who's the main character's voice actor it's robert carlisle but i was just like man this is the guy from stargate universe with full monty or once upon a time, he plays all the creepy dudes. Now he's playing the hero. It's weird. I'm not used to hearing his voice in this context. And yeah, Patrick Stewart's in here. That's always fun. Patrick, St I mean, Patrick Stewart, just as a, as a general rule, tends to elevate anything that he's in. So, yeah. Um, cinematics, I found myself skipping through. I guess I didn't really... F it, it's, it's generic fantasy schlock, and I'm a little tired of it. Um... I kind of like I kind of long for the old days of Castlevania where it was a little ridiculous where you had like enemies known as known as like Paula a ghoul and Fred a scare and it's like oh no we're totally not ripping off these guys they're completely different people the this, this is just gothic fantasy 
done in the laziest way possible. So it, it didn't. It doesn't, the story doesn't win any points for me. Um, but where the where the game shines is 100 percent the combat. The exploration is pretty dumb though. Like Ben said, uh, there's lots of there's lots of dead ends. There at the end of, after you clear a level, there's like oh yeah, you could have found all of these things. Um, unfortunately, explore yeah, like Ben said, exploration is kind of disincentivized because the camera is really poor. You don't necessarily know where you can explore. And it ultimately just leads to the same place anyways. And like I did I did the thing where I was like, oh, where does this go? Oh, I just backtracked this area. Ha! Huh, I just wasted a bunch of my time. This is very much Final Fantasy 13-esque on Rails. There's good stuff in this game. There's bad stuff in this game. I I can't. I can't give it three tiers. I'll give it a solid two, though. There, there's de there's definitely stuff to enjoy in here. And if you're a fan of God of War, you'll probably like this game because it's the same freaking game. Yeah, I, I'm really happy that we are reviewing this game because third-person action adventure games happen to be like my favorite style of game. Uh, like Darksiders 1 and 2, those are great. Like the Tomb Raider are really good. Uh, all those kind of games, yeah. I love them. We didn't we didn't get a lot of like native ports of those uh, this of this style. So I'm pretty happy that there's one that's been whitelisted on Porton that we can just play. Um, plus, it's Castlevania's uh, all time classic, and yeah, uh, it's a good interpretation of the of the, what is this game. So. It is it is meant to be a reboot of the series. It is uh, so it doesn't continue any of the previous uh, games that were released. And you see that it, it tries to 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 provide some elements that were in the first games, but not necessarily the RPG elements of their later games. So you won't have a Symphony of the Night type. More like a Castlevania four of a run of blood type, uh, and it's putting this like platformer into a modern game setting. Well, modern it's already pretty old, but it's, it's modern ish. Uh, and anyway, the games over these past ten years they haven't changed that much. Uh, so yeah, it would totally be like that for a modern game. Uh, it is hard. But you know what? I mean, it's a game called Castlevania. This is, we used to have this series of games before the, the Dark Souls, you know, and those hard games. And yeah, that, that was Castlevania before the reference became Dark Souls for some reason. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty much the difficulty is all pattern based. So you just have to learn patterns like for a boss or for a specific enemies or for a specific series of quick time events and you gotta like practice on them and you'll get there um, i haven't had a lot of chance to to play the game as much as i wanted but i know i will pick more it's not a game you can't put down really because if you put it down then you get to forget all the combos and everything so you want to keep keep it playing until you you finish it um but yeah like like uh, Doom, like Tomb Raider, very solid reboots. I was glad to see that uh, Adio Kojima was involved in the project. And hashtag fuck Konami. It was it's it was before Konami became fully horrible. So good for that's like saying good. that was before the cancer full in the stats. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, Konami did release a lot of good games, and Castlevania was so on a them. scale of one to four. So, what would you give it? Three, three chairs for me. Three chairs. All right. All right. Well, there we go. Six thousand years later, it is now the year twenty twenty. Welcome back, folks, Yay. to Linux Gamecast. <laughs> <laughs>